What's up, everybody? You are listening to the Data is My Science podcast, the show that makes data your passion. I am your host, Dapper Data. I have a very special guest on here, okay? As you all know, I talk about programming. I talk about AI, right? We're not going to talk about AI, artificial intelligence. We're not going to talk about machine learning. We may dabble a little bit in that. We're not going to talk about programming languages, deep diving into that. We're not going to talk about how data science has impacted airplanes, whatever it is. You know, we're going to talk about data integration. I've talked about data integration probably one episode out of uh, the 40 something, the 60 something episodes that I've done. Um, and, and data integration is something that we really, really need to understand is important, right? When you're integrating the data into your environment, it has to go through several processes, all right? Uh, being able to ingest it, being able to transform it, being able to turn it into something that is uh, uh, viable to the customer, to the end user, right? It's all important. But as you all know, I bring in a special guest every time I'm talking about a topic, right? <laughs> and I brought in somebody that is going to change your life. Okay, he's going to he's going to make sure that you understand the impact of data integration in this world, okay? And for me, when I think about data integration, I think about cleansing the data. I think about making sure that it's robust, free of error, right? Duplication, all that complication and stuff that's in the data. To me, that's probably 90% of the preparation when it comes down to making sure data is viable, right? Being able to integrate it the proper way, okay? And I brought somebody on the on here, an expert. You know, his name is Michelle Trico, and, and 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 Michelle has been working in the data engineering industry for about 15 years, right? And he has co-founded a company called Airbyte. That's a new open source data integration company. Probably not new anymore. I'm probably behind the curve right now, you know. But it's a, a an open source uh, um, data integration platform that is changing the world, making an impact on the world, okay, from a data integration standpoint. Um, and without further ado, I want to introduce you to Michelle. Michelle, tell them a little, little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, a little bit about myself. I think you said it well. I've been working in the in, in the data integration, in the data space for the, for the past 15 years. I've worked at different scale, whether it's financial data feed scale or whether it's internet scale moving hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data every single day. And I was, um, and I did the same also for um, like IoT data, like getting sensor data from cars, getting data, like map data. And how do you actually integrate all that data into your data infrastructure to actually extract value from it? And yeah, it's a, I, I would say I got burned quite a few times because data integration is probably one of the hardest problems around data. But exactly. I think every, every time you get burned, you learn something. And today, the idea behind Airbyte as, as an open source uh, platform is really about can we share these burns with the, with the rest of our community, with the rest of our users, and making sure that they have the best experience integrating with data. Right. No, no, that, that's excellent. You know, and, and um, you work in a, a very difficult portion of that data transformation process, right? We, mm -hmm. we just just even mentioned the same thing that I just talked about, uh, how important and probably I think it's the most difficult process of that, right? You know, because I always say at the end of the day, when you have clean data, right, you can make better decisions. Right. Or if you have dirty data, you're making bad decisions. Right. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, so so what you're doing is being able to handle that part to make sure that the person at the end is making very, very good decisions. You know? uh, but, yeah. So what do you, when it comes down to data integration, how important is it in the industry um, and within your organization in general? Yeah. So. I would say the, the root problem of data integration is about the fact that companies have data that is siloed. They have data on an S3 bucket. They have data in a Kafka queue. They have data in a database. They have data in a SaaS API. And, mm -hmm. and the problem is this data is completely fragmented. And when a, a company starts buying a warehouse or starting start to, to buy a way to actually process and extract insights from that data, they very quickly realize that, oh, I have my brand new shiny warehouse. How do I actually get data into it? And because of how many and how heterogeneous all these sources of data are, 
that becomes mm -hmm. then a real issue for data teams to actually build all these different connectors. So how do I connect to the Salesforce API? How do I connect to the uh, Stripe API? And this number grows because you'll get more data and you use more tools and you use more sources. And right. that's, that's when data teams start to really suffer. And if you think about it, whether you pull data from uh, Salesforce or whether I pull data from Salesforce, we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So why should, why should uh, a data team actually build this type of connectors? And that's what we're doing is like making sure that you have a central place where you have access to out of the box connectors and you can just pull the data into your warehouse. We don't do uh, data cleaning. We don't do uh, quality yet on data. The, the goal is really about ensuring that we remove the complexity of connecting to uh, very heterogeneous systems. So, so like the API, about... right? Just making sure all the APIs you got to connect to every time. You're making sure that it's seamless. It's easy for the customer to bring in data without having to do all that crazy stuff they have to do to connect to. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. And whether it's APIs or whether it's databases, or whether it's like high scale type of sources, we want to make sure that the data can flow and it's something that is simple and you are sure that at some point the data will be at the place where you need so that you can do your analysis. Oh, oh, and, and that's actually interesting because I would, I, I usually, um, or I've, there's a lot of companies that maybe try to focus on more than they can manage, right? They, they say, hey, look, I'm going to focus on the connectivity, making sure I'm connecting to all the different sources, I can bring it in and I can clean it. And when you start thinking about it, you know, you're not really specializing in a certain area because you're saying I can do all these different things. And um, I think what you're doing is presenting value and a, ver a really good specialty in a specific area, right? You're kind of breaking that down and saying, hey, I am focusing in on the connectivity and making sure that you can bring the data over seamlessly right yeah. i don't have to worry about cleaning and all that stuff like that you can do all that good stuff and then that allows them to do it with whatever they want to do it with right maybe r or python programming whatever it is that they want to do it with they can do that but mm -hmm. you're saying hey, look i'm allowing you that pathway from all the different sources to do all the greatness that you want to do right exactly that's exactly it. Uh, and if you think about how many sources you can have data in it's My you cannot boy. count exactly you <laughs> cannot count it so one of the reasons why we are an open source uh, uh, solution is that we want to make sure that the community can actually build missing connectors. Or if there is a connector that doesn't exactly behave the way they want, they can actually take it, fork it, modify it, and put it back into a byte and just customize the connector for their own needs. Mm -hmm. So making sure we can really address the long tail with the help of our community. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a company that's focused on that. Do you have like competitors? I can, I, I can, I can only agree with you. It's, it's amazing. Is it? <laughs> no, but... yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I was going to say, do you have competitors, but we're not going to talk about the competitors, right? They, we don't need to talk yeah. about that. <laughs> but, but, but no, but I, actually, I think it's, it's still important to talk about competition because when you're looking at a product like that, you need to understand like, why are there competitors? And mm -hmm. when you look at existing solution, you have a few, you have five trend, you have Stitch, you have Matinian. They all mm -hmm. have the same problem, which is they have a ceiling on how many connectors they can handle because as a company, they cannot build all these connectors. Whether if you go in the, the open source world and suddenly you're crowdsourcing the effort across all these different organizations right. with that data and you can address the long tail of connector. You can have as many connectors as you want. And also, mm -hmm. yes. You, because it's open source, you can customize it. You can do whatever you want with it. But I think yeah. it, it, it just sets us apart from the competition because we have this ability to cover the long term. We have this ability to customize connectors. Right, right. And, that, and, and, and you're absolutely right, right? You know, as far as being able to have, like, scalability, right, within the, mm -hmm. connect, the connectors, right? A lot of people have those differentiators where they say, oh, I can only scale up so much. But when you have open source, a lot of times it's endless, right? You have endless possibilities yeah. that happen when you're integrating with that. You know, of course, a lot of customers complain about supportability, right? Sometimes because open source is open source, right? It's open mm -hmm. to the public. But I always believe. I mean, you think about it uh, as far as you know um, uh, the cost and all that good stuff. You know, if you have 
open source connect or open source implementation in your environment is always better to go that route. The government is is doing a lot of open source now, right? You know, they, yeah. they, they try to stay away from it for a while, but they're adapting it uh, even more and more, you know. Um, yeah. Just with open source, it's very hard to beat open source because you're suddenly having access to all the brain power of people. And as a single company, yes, there might be very specific type of products that are very difficult to spread across multiple contributors, but I mean, the, the internet is, is running on Linux. Linux is an yeah. open source <laughs> Kubernetes right. is an open source product, and it's very hard for one single company to just build that. So at that point, once you have the community, once you have your open source project, like the, the velocity of this project is huge. And we've seen that recently with Kubernetes and, and other are very, very Kubernetes. successful projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kubernetes is taking over now and a lot of a lot of different open source projects are taking over, you know. Um, and they're changing them, right? They're changing the open source to be uh, they're they're offering sometimes open source, which is free, right? You know, but then they're also also offering the uh, the the paid version of this open source thing, right? As well, because the government always tries to charge people all the time, you know. Um, so so we have data integration as probably one of the initial phases, right? I like to look at as initial phases. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of parts you can divvy up the data integration and probably about uh, multiple yeah. things, right? But if I if I take the initial ingest, right, you know, before I'm actually transforming the data and all that stuff, you know, uh, uh, so you have ingest of the data, right, from multiple different sources. What is the next phase? Do you think? You know, what is that phase that um, you know? Even at, I mean, now we're talking about even an airbike, right? You know. If you were to say, hey, look, you know, next up, right, outside of open source uh, data integration or data ingestion um, part, you know, is there room? Is there room, or is there even thought to kind of take that to the next level? Maybe. Okay. I, I would say we're still, you know, we've been we've been around for a little bit more than a year now, so, and I think we're also at the beginning of. A new, like a change in how we're thinking about the data stack, how we think about companies consuming data. So what we're doing, we're far from done. So, and as a company, I think it's important to stay very focused on solving a pain point and yeah. really go deep into it. So the piece about uh, ensuring that we have, that we continue to, uh, to work with our community to build all these connectors to help maintaining all these connectors it, it that's basically for it's a full-time job to to be clear now we as you mentioned we we also want to make sure that we build a sustainable business because if we have a sustainable business then we can give more to to the to the community and at that point it becomes okay what kind of service can we build on top of it on top of airbyte we recently uh released airbyte cloud in uh like invite only uh uh, as invite only because we're still working out uh, a few details but the idea is that not everybody wants to maintain uh, integration in their data infrastructure they might just want to pay someone to do it and at that point we want to make sure that they have they have the, the opportunity to do it it's really about maximizing the adoption of the of the solution um, yeah, yeah i mean every every time you um implement something once you have the day you have the hardest part right that that or you have like the beginning stages integrated in data but once you uh master that portion right get enough customers out there mastering the portion um and they're and they're loving this this portion that you mastered it then you have the next phases in place and you can just take it to the moon from there right because uh you have the ability to take it all the way to um to to the phase where uh, people are making decisions based off of the data and, and integrated and and being able to munge it, wrangle it, all that good stuff, you know, and clean it, yeah. right, and everything. And there's a big difference, right? I, I like to say between data integration and data engineering, right? You have like the ingest, transformate, transformation, and, and now that I think about it, I haven't talked about data integration before um, on a podcast. I thought I did, but I, I only talked about data engineering because. Uh, when you think about data engineering, you're thinking about like developing, maintaining like large scales of data, right, in place. Yeah. 
and um, you know preparing that structured and unstructured data during the process. But before that, you have to ingest it, you got to transform it, you have to deliver yep. it to the phase, right? You have to scale it, right? Data warehouse exactly. platforms and all that stuff. And you mentioned something that was interesting. You're actually before the d- data warehouse process. You're trying to put it in the data warehouse, right? You know, is mm-hmm. that that what we're do we agree on that? Yeah. Is that yeah, okay. that's correct. Yeah. It's basically about everything that has to do with moving the data from point A to point B. Point yeah. A is an API, point B is a warehouse, or point A could be a warehouse and point B could be an API. Right, right, right. Now, now, I mean, you're probably getting different file types. You're getting different, uh, it doesn't matter. You're kind of putting it in, all in to the warehouse for mm-hmm. somebody, right, yeah. from different, different Correct. sources. You know? Correct. So when we talk about connections, right, we, connectivity, um, between that, right? We can get very technical, but a lot of times people miss the business side of things, right? Mm-hmm. People miss the the integration between data, right, and then and then business, right? Business intelligence or data integration, business intelligence. How does that connection fit with their company? You know, how do, what do you see data integration and business intelligence kind of mixing with each other? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think that is one of the root of why the data world is changing right now, which is in the Hadoop and Spark days, it was mostly data engineers or engineers that would work and try to extract uh, insights. Now with warehouses and how simple they are to use, how elastic they are, uh, you can start enabling new roles to actually consume data that have, and these people have the domain expertise on what they want to to get, what kind of insights they want to get. So they are being enabled to do more and more with data. And the connectivity piece is actually important. It's like, how do you ensure that these new roles have access to the data? So with Airbyte, it's really about, can we expose something that is simple for this audience so that they can be autonomous? And the data team behind the scene is more here as we are building a platform for the rest of the organization instead of them doing the job. So they are building the platform so that now you can hire more people with domain expertise and and they are autonomous. So, and the connectivity, and that is also one of the reasons why we try to stay away from transformation because transformation means applying business logic. So when we do the, the extraction and the load, we try to be, to think about it as a physical movement without transformation because we don't know how, what these people will want to do as an analysis. So if you put the transformation with like it's what we call ETL in the middle, then suddenly as a data engineer, you start injecting logic. You start injecting business logic. And in the end, these roles will have data that is already biased. Right, so right. you want to make sure that they have access to everything. <laughs> I said it's yeah. almost like thank God on data. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's just like the more data you have, the better decision you can make. And you want to make sure that the data is not altered. I mean, yes, you need to alter it sometime for like privacy reasons or security reasons. But that's something that is part of the connectivity uh, parts, which is just make sure you don't put a social security number in a data warehouse. So making sure that you have this check-in pass, but once the data is there, just let people do what they need to do with the data. Let them extract the insights they want. So it's very, it's actually very, very, uh, it's actually working very well. And I think that's why we see warehouses becoming more and more popular, solutions like Airbyte becoming more and more popular is that people have understood how important it was to have this data. Yeah, do, do you all work with um, specific data warehouses or um, um, specific companies that, that are like known data warehouses to be able to kind of interact with them? Yeah. So basically with Airbyte, you can pull from as many sources as you want, but we can, you can, and on the warehouse side, you just, you can put it on Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, Postgres, even on like S3, GCS, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really a matter of, it doesn't matter what your data infrastructure look like, but oh. if it's about moving data from point A to point B, you can. Oh man, is it is it in the marketplace already? Like on AWS or anything like that, or can I? Not yet, not yet. It's, okay. it, oh, it's sorry, Adam. I, I, <laughs> it will be. It will be. If you need help, I would definitely just ping me. I'll I'll, 
I'll, I'll try my best on my end. I know a lot of people that look that, that it has to be up there because this is an amazing product, you know, it, yeah. no reason why it should not be in the yeah. mix, you know, because when you think I, about I, play, you know, all that stuff. I, I, the only thing that, the only reason why it's not yet on the, the marketplace is because we wanted to build the cloud uh, version of it before we put it there. Ah, so it's more of an on-prem version right now, um, mm -hmm. meaning probably a certain amount of resources, things like that, you know, on-prem yeah. things like that, once it gets yeah. blessed. That's great, you know. I mean, I I, I know it's gonna it's gonna be there soon, you know. I mean, that's that's uh, it 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 has to be there, right? Because it, it's an amazing product, and the way that the cloud is going and things like that, you know. Uh, once you put something like that in front of, you know, like a snowflake or anything like that, it's going to change change the world for sure, you know. And uh, you know, by when I think about um, delivering sort of a unified view of numerous data data uh, numerous like data sources right numerous uh, sources out there you know data integration is probably one of the top uh, uh aspects of that you know in relation to business mm -hmm. intelligence and processes of analysis and all that good stuff you know yeah. um i think at the end of the day it's about having actionable actionable inf for information you know being able to take action on information that's coming into play and you all are playing probably the uh, I always I keep saying this right now throughout this podcast that you're playing probably the, the, the best part of it, you know. So what I what I think the audience probably wants to hear the most, right, about this conversation is the future, right? Mm -hmm. When we think about the future of uh, we we talk a lot about the future of technology. We talk about uh, when we get into AI and machine learning, we talk about, you know, will the robots take over? Right, <laughs> we always talk yeah. about that. But um, you know, when we're talking about data infrastructure or integration, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where do you see the future is going with that? Right, we have cloud computing, we got big data, we got machine learning, we got these data lakes and data warehouses and all that good stuff right in place. And yeah. the tech yeah. world is is endless. You know, um, your thoughts um, from your expert expertise, you know, where do you see the future of data infrastructure and integration going? Yeah, I think it's, it is going to be moving toward simplicity hmm. where, and the, the success of data warehouse is a very big um, testament to that, which is there is not enough data engineer in the world to do all the data work. So you need, and the data continues to grow more and more and the value you get continues to grow more and more. So the simplicity is gonna be there to enable more and more people to do it. And in terms of how I'm thinking about the data infrastructure today is data teams are gonna be pro the providers of data platforms for their teams. And mm -hmm. where it will be in the back end is very much what we're talking about today, which is you have a way to ingest data wherever it is. Mm -hmm. You have a way to process the data that could be the warehouse. You have a way to actually apply transformation on the warehouse that could be DBT. That could be also about um, like quality or branding tools. And, and then once you have that, then you're gonna have like the, the layer on top of it that is simple to use, which is BI tools, which is uh, right. a, a looker, like a, a, a super set or, mm -hmm. uh, or all of these solutions. But I think it's more around like the simplicity. And then what you're going to have as well, and we, we see it with the, there are already some company that are doing it, which is what we call reverse it here, which is mm -hmm. about, I have data in my warehouse. I've enriched it. I've segmented it. I've, I've cleaned it. How do we actually send it back where mm. I can leverage it? So making sure that you can have this full round trip of the data where you take it from Salesforce, you bring it to you bring it to your warehouse, you enrich it, you do some processing, and you send it back to Salesforce. And you keep having like this very uh, mm. this very nice loop where you become better at making decisions and you become better at doing analysis. Right, right. And then you're probably throwing something in there to make things more efficient, right? You know, more efficient in place as far yeah. as the decision making, the accuracy, I mean, becomes better and better over time 
exactly. once you do that trans that 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 uh that transformation that you talk about that cycle right that life cycle yeah. of the data and make it more simplistic the, the end goal would be to uh, the accuracy of the data so your decision making goes from over time as more data more historical data comes into place more historical data that is transformed and you're doing all the cleansing and all the good stuff um at the end of the day when they when they when they get it to that end user or customer making a better decision they become more and more accurate over time you know exactly. so that's that's amazing you know and there's tools out there right they're starting to do this stuff right we're talking about like yeah. no code tools and all this stuff right low, low code where they're not even using code you know do you yeah do you see um is there code that that's needed for the stuff that you have at airbyte or or is that something that you don't need a code for to know it how to code it depends where you're at uh if you're using out of the box connector yes no code if you need to build a connector i mean you have to code your connector or if you need to update a connector you need to but then it becomes our responsibility to build abstraction so that it becomes simpler and simpler to create and, and maintain connectors. Right, right. I'm sure eventually it's going to be something where it's not even code needed for that, right? You know, where you just drag and drop and say, look, I just want you to connect to this source. They do all the code in the back end, connect yeah. to this source, and then bring it over, right? It'll, it'll just be some, some cool connectivity going on. Exactly. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't. I'm sure you all have all these great ideas. You're planning for it. You're you're doing it already. You're not feeling it, you know. Um, so don't mind me. Um, but yeah, no. I, this has been a great, great session, um, Michelle. You have been amazing guest, right? You know, and and what you're doing right now is you're making a big difference in the world at a stage in data transformation that nobody's really connecting with, right? You know, I, in my eyes, a lot of times people skip past the hard part right when it comes down to data integration right you see so many products out there that are like let me skip past the integration portion and let me just you know do the visualization right you know at the end of the day i don't i don't have to deal with that because that's like 90 percent of the work that a data scientist has to do right trying to connect yeah. the source trying to bring the data in, trying to you know do all the cleaning and all that great stuff you know that's that's a that's a a process that I really wanted to run away from at one point, and I started to like it more and more as I started to do more interviews in data science and stuff. But you know, I thank you for everything that you're doing. You know, um, audience, you know, I I think that uh, uh, what I've learned today so far is um, is a company like Airbyte is is changing the world, right? You know. Um, a lot of times, like I said, we skip the process, but the, the most important process, the piece of it that will that will help make decisions better, better in the long run is that data integration portion. So don't skip that, right? Make sure that that part is 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 probably the most satisfying, the most uh, the the part that you're really diving into more than anything to make sure it's right because you cannot make good decisions with bad data, right? You know, you can't make uh, you can't you you can only make uh, good decisions with good quality data right and it starts from ingesting from the right source and being able to ingest it into the right location and all that good stuff you know is there anything that you want to say michelle you know to the audience um i mean we're open source so anyone can check out the code it's on github uh you can find it it's on airbyte.io and also have a, a very active uh, Slack community. We have about 4,000 people on Slack. So you can find any any question about data integration, any question about Airbyte, you can find people uh, over there to help you. And slack.airbyte.io. So you're welcome there. OK, OK, great, great, great. And um, as far as data integration, is there any like nuggets or anything like that? You know, is there? um you know anything that you want to leave the audience with as far as data integration yeah don't don't underestimate how hard it is to build it yourself <laughs> oh, that's that, is, good. that is important because the cost is not so much in building it's in maintaining like the problem with data integration is you connect to a system that you don't control and this system is always gonna break it's always going to make you unhappy. 
So don't don't try to build it because you will once you do, you have to maintain it until the end of time. So let the community let uh, let other people work with you on the on the maintenance and uh, and yeah, it's just data integration is a very very hard problem and you can get by with one or two connectors, but once you start going to three, four, five, that's when things start to uh, to collapse. Yeah, yeah, and and if we think about it, if you decide to sort of skip that process and not not focus in on it, right? It's going to cause you big problems in the long run, right? You're, you're, you know, so you know that's a great great point to make, you know, Michelle. Um, all right, so here's the fun part. Okay, I like to end. Everybody knows I like to end with something called overrated, underrated, and I got this from a motivational speaker that I um, that I that I that I love. I listen to all the time. Uh, his name is Gary V. And and he always used to say, hey, look, you know, give me overrated, underrated questions. You know, so I said, hey, let's take this to a podcast. And what I do is I ask the guests, right, the subject matter expert stuff that is not related to the topic that we talk about. right? And it's all fun stuff. Right. And I like to say, hey, look, do you think this is overrated or underrated or do you think that is right where it needs to be? So I okay. asked you Michelle, about seven questions. I'll just throw the topic out there and you get to say overrated, underrated, or where it needs to be. You can explain if you want, or you don't have to, and we keep going. Okay. I'll probably chime in myself too. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Social media. Overrated. Overrated. Oh, really? <laughs> All right. The printer. Overrated. Overrated. I agree. I agree with that. I agree. <laughs> All right. Eiffel Tower. I hope I said that be. because I know you're from France. <laughs> Where it should be. <laughs> Where it should be? Okay. How many yeah. times have you been? Oh, I, I get there almost every summer with my kids. They love go. They, they love climbing the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it like a, a, how long does it take to get from the bottom to the top? You don't you don't walk to the top. You you take an elevator. <laughs> elevator right, right, okay. Yeah. It, it does take a long time to get to the to the top of the elevator. Yeah, it, we like to do like going to the first uh, the, the first floor, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean the second floor. But yeah, it's, uh, otherwise it's very very long. I mean especially with kids. I've never done it myself, but uh, yeah, it can take forever. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, now the desktop. The desktop of a computer or my desktop where I have my computer on? Oh, the desktop, like a computer desktop versus like a yeah. laptop or like a mobile device or something. Oh, okay. Oh, underrated. Underrated. Oh, you really enjoy the desktop? You think desktop is something that oh, is... No. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. The desktop. No, I was I was looking at my laptop and I was I love my laptop. Yeah, desktop yeah, yeah, you love it's laptop. completely overrated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think the I think the desktop is overrated. I mean, I think the desktop is uh, is is something that um, I don't know. I guess if you need a lot of resources to 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 do a bunch of things with data and you don't want a server or something like that, then yeah, maybe you want a desktop. But other than that, I mean, you can't do anything. You have to be mobile nowadays, right? You know, you got to get around. You got your phone. You got your laptop. You know, I just can't take it. You know. Yeah. Um, all right, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese? A grilled cheese sandwich. Honestly, I think it's underrated. That's what I'm talking about right there, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot beat a good grilled cheese sandwich. Exactly. <laughs> it's, I've discovered the grilled cheese. I mean, we have something that is a bit similar in France. It's called a uh, croque monsieur. Mm. So that's, uh, and I think it's an underrated uh, dish. It's, it's delicious. Uh -huh, uh huh. Is it is it is it done with like uh, what kind of cheese is it? Is it? Uh... I mean, that's. I think that's why it's underrated. People think it's like the, the terrible cheese, but if you put put good cheese, good bread, that's when yeah. the, the the grilled cheese shines. Oh man, like a good amount of like butter or something, you know, in there that just you know just just right, right? You know, I'll have to try that, you know, at some point. Okay, all right, chocolate cake. Where it should be. Where it should be. Okay, okay. All right. This one right here. I heard that I heard that France is this is big in France. Okay. It's two things I'm gonna say. 
right? The first one is pastries. Mm-hmm. Is it overrated, underrated? Underrated. Underrated? Oh, so you, you no, you're being biased, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Some good like croissants, right? I saw yeah, them. I was, yeah. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to go to France, right? Yeah. You know, to have some good good croissants. You know, me and my girlfriend we talk about going to France all the time. You know, um, okay. And next, uh, I think they said lavender bushes or something like that. You know, like lavender is a smell, so like wine uh, and things oh, like that. Lavender smell, oh, overrated. Overrated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's big in France, isn't it? They said that the lavender smell yeah. is big in France. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, uh, it probably gets tiring and old after a while, right? <laughs> Just smelling all the time. <laughs> It smells, right, well, it smells good, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Michelle, for being on the Data is My Science podcast. Audience, you are listening to the Data is My Science podcast, the show that makes data your passion. I am your host, Dapper Data, and today we have Michelle on here. He is really helping change the world and make a difference in data, um, a really integral part in data that nobody really talks about, right? Data integration, the initial phases of it, right? Getting the data ingested into your data warehouses and things like that, you know. Um, so where can they reach you at if they want to reach you related to Airbyte or talk about technology or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I would say start with Airbyte.io and you have links to GitHub, you have links to our public Slack and all the team of Airbyte is on the public Slack. That That is our company Slack. It's just, it's mm-hmm. also open to, to our community so we can, we can help, we can have conversation about new features, about the, the, the direction of the project. So just don't hesitate to join. All right, great, great. Everybody at IO, all right. Um, as you all know, you can reach me on um, any of the social media plat- platforms that, at Mr. Dapper Data, that's at M-R-D-A-P-P-E-R-D-A-T-A. Um, again, on any one of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, you name it, whatever it is. Um, and definitely subscribe to my book at www.mrdapperdata.com forward slash dapper data dapper book. Um, and again, thanks again, Michelle, for having me on, uh, having you on the podcast. It's been a pleasure uh, being able to host you and stuff. And I, I hope we can do this again. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.